Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. When uh, the good folks at IntelliCap first came to me and said, uh, this wonderful evening is going to play out and they want me to be master of ceremonies for it, I said, are you really sure you want to hire a radio presenter without having a, an off button? <laughs> because on the radio, you can switch off a radio presenter with a push of a button. Because we do tend to go on and on and on. But it's a little dangerous to unleash us on the mic, you know, without a, an off button. But they were willing to take their chances on me, and I hope you're going to take your chances with me. Welcome to a delightful evening. It's what we call the Salmkalp Global Summit Awards. Now, these awards eventually, at the end of the evening, will honor the India finalists and also winners from Africa and Southeast Asia. It was a revelation for me to to just listen to all the panelists who were speaking in, uh, just after the, the welcome address. And the fact that innovations for the next three billion has so many layers to it was something that I just realized after, after listening to them talk. I mean, here was a gentleman who was, who was comparing pregnancy to alleviation of poverty and how beautifully that can happen. And in that aspect, what we're about to present to you this evening are the most innovative startups curated by IntelliCap Impact Investment Network. Now, these people have developed highly disruptive products to address market opportunity for the next three billion. And going with the theme and the fact that globally by 2030, three billion people will enter the middle income bracket like Nisha said uh, right at the top, Nisha from IntelliCap, Rapid growth markets of Africa, Eastern Europe, Latin America, the Middle East are obviously going to drive demand for relevant products and services at a huge scale. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to go sector by sector. And each sector will have a cohort of entrepreneurs who are going to make their elevator pitches. And uh, they're going to be given one minute. So. All of you who are going to make elevator pitches, please remember that there will be a buzzer that will go off after a minute, and that really is a cue for you to, to kind of wrap up and uh, be quick about your business. The first sector that we're going to start with is healthcare. And if you look at healthcare as a sector, India is losing at least 6% of its GDP to premature death and preventable illnesses. The poorest 20% of Indians have more than doubled the mortality rate, the fertility rate, and undernutrition levels compared to the richest 20%. Now, innovations in healthcare are driven by health reforms that are disrupting business models, increasing need and demand for quality healthcare in tier two and tier three cities, an increase in per capita income, an aging population that's obviously demanding more care, better care, and of course, the adoption of technology. So there's wearables and there's, you know, telemedicine that is that has come into the whole mix. Now the idea is to get all of that into the medical mainstream. And it's obvious that digitization has clearly amped healthcare awareness and the need for better services. So let's now meet these wonderful entrepreneurs giving us their pitch in the healthcare sector. Now how it's going to work is they're going to get their minute and uh, participants, speakers, when you minute, wrap up and remain seated on stage. And when all the presentation for the sector, presentations for the sector are over, which in this case in the healthcare sector is four presentations, four entrepreneurs making their elevator pitches, you will remain seated and we'll do a short question and answer and then uh, you can leave stage and we'll move on to the next sector. So in the health sector, let me invite Ashish Gaude from Jeevtronics. Hi, Ashish Gaude from Jeevtronics. We have India's death rate due to sudden cardiac arrest is three to four times that of developed countries, and number of defibrillators available is low. And we have so, two reasons. One is lack of power and a lack of affordability. We have solved this by developing the world's first hand-cranked defibrillator. That would be priced at one-fourth that of the global brands but quality-wise, it would be better. That's one. This is a $2.2 billion market worldwide, 
and growing to grow to 2.7 by 2020. Uh, we have a strong team in place with 20 patents, three specific to this technology, one regulator and medical device designer with 40 years experience, two technology and social, uh, serial social entrepreneurs uh, who have both business and technical background. We are, and we will hit the market within next nine to 12 months. And we are looking to raise about $1.5 million. <laughs> That's it. Thank you. So that's Ashish from Jeev Tronics. Nitin Sisodia from Soham, please, in the healthcare sector. Nitin? I am Nitin Sisodia, founder and CEO of Soham Innovation Lab. You will be surprised to know that most of the people who are born with hearing loss and who are not able to speak could speak had they been identified with hearing loss at the time of birth. But this is not happening in India and other developing countries. Every year, 800,000 such babies are born with hearing loss all over the world and remain un un unidentified with hearing loss. We at Soham are trying to change this. We have designed a novel device and technology to screen newborns with the help of brain signal analysis to screen newborns at the time of birth and provide early intervention. We have done our early clinical trials and uh, have got high sensitivity specificity of 98.25 and 90% respectively. We'll be doing our clinical trial stage two at uh, Ames, New Delhi. There are several novel features to this device. It can uh, screen babies in very less time. It has uh, a, a novel algorithm to do screening in uh, noisy environments. It does not require disposables and is uh, very easy to use by healthcare workers. We are looking for your support and uh, implementation partnership so as to make it true make in India for global health medical device product. Thank you. That's Nitin Sisodia from Soham. In the healthcare sector, the next elevator pitch is from Surbhi Srivastav, Innovision. Surbhi, welcome on stage. Good evening, everyone. Uh, would you please do something for me? Uh, close your eyes, take out your smartphones, and look up our website, innovisiontech.co. Pretty impossible, isn't it? This is the reality for 40 million people across the world every day. Traditionally, these blind people have been dependent on Braille, which in the printed format is expensive and bulky. And with the shift towards digital information, these blind individuals have been uh, left to rely on audio-based software, which has led to low literacy as well as unemployment. We at InnoVision are trying to solve this problem with the first ever low-cost electronic Braille device. This device is at one-tenth the price of existing products in the market due to our patent technology. We shall be available at the Sankalp Forum over the next two days with a demo of our device. And you can reach out. We're looking for strategic partnerships as well as funding opportunities. And please join us in creating a world of equal opportunities. Thank you. Arun Cherian from Rise Legs. Hi, Arun. Worldwide, there are 7 million people who've lost a part of their leg. In India alone, it's over a million. Diabetes is the largest cause of amputation. With India being the diabetic capital of the world, it's increasing at the rate of 50,000 people a year. That's one every 30 seconds. To cater to that need in India, you've got the low-cost free legs that are heavy and cumbersome, but with a, a documented low adoption rate. And then you have the foreign players that make a lightweight, flexible legs that are expensive, starting at at least one lakh. Now, at Rise Legs, we are creating a low-cost, lightweight, flexible uh, leg using natural cane from the forests of India with which people can not just walk and work longer but also run, play and dance. Our call out is for world class talent and resources to reach the next 100,000 people and scale to 100 countries worldwide. Thank you. Just some quick questions uh, for, for you guys. Surbi, uh, you know, everybody who deals with government infrastructure, a regulatory environment always has has a problem. We know that. You're up against the wall. There are lots of regulations. How do you work around that? How do you plan for that as an entrepreneur? Uh, so in terms of tech hardware, there are a lot of certifications that are required for any device that gets sold. Um, so you have to take into consideration all of that uh, right from the designing stage. It will help you uh, different iterations at a later point and save you a lot of time as well as cost. That's one thing. The other is that uh, 
the government right now with its new initiatives has tried to help a lot specifically for ip driven or technology innovation driven companies so hopefully that part which covers uh, patenting cost or uh, especially global patent costs etc uh, and r and d grants would help uh, any venture considerably so there's support also on that system and uh, our company is actually incubated at the iit bombay incubation center so we have actually had uh, a lot of support from the government or from the policy end that you are referring to so uh, before you send your product out into into the market you have to make sure that it uh, satisfies the quality that all competitor products or the global market demands if you want a make in india to actually sell globally ashish uh, fabulous that you've got an affordable product there but you know what worries me is what nisha talked about right at the top which is when you have an affordable product often you tend to get into a jugaad space so here's an affordable product how do you plan to strike a balance between an affordable product and the right quality okay good question and very fair question for well, last thing we want to get into is a tata nano syndrome right yeah. wherein uh, just the price point becomes a perception of low quality right so what we have done is we have collected already 18 years worth of durability data okay already 18 years worth of data so we know that whatever we have come up with and whatever we have patented is rock solid and in work for decades and uh, so that that's it basically right so you should have very strong data to to prove whatever you're doing so innovation is always fun interesting right but the hard work and the sweat and the blood and tears come from all this validation data that is required so that's what we do and um, if you look at the dna of our company uh, two of the co-founders come from automotive industry and the third one comes from medical device so there is there has been cross pollination of knowledge here a, a car or a truck works in hot desert and extremely cold climate so from minus 40 degrees to plus 50 degrees on and so forth right so that's what we do with the medical device you know make sure it's very rugged works everywhere every time 